to this videos? If we make 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. You're fired. Trump's team crushes White House mole with a colossal sledgehammer. President Trump, obviously weary of constant leaks, has now had enough. His new communications director, Anthony Scaramucci, has been sent in to plug the leaks, and it's clear that heads are going to roll. In fact, one already has. Before our Democratic friends get all self-righteous over this act of shutting down leaks, and start making the false claim that the Trump administration is trying to act in secrecy, we have a question, where might we find the recordings or Mr. Obama's and Mrs. Clinton's private conversations in the White House? Better yet, let's record the meetings of the Federal Reserve Board and release them to the public. That would no doubt scare the daylights out of anyone who understood what was being said. The fact remains that organizations cannot function without some degree of confidentiality. Mr. Scaramucci's job is to keep confidential White House information contained within the White House. That he's serious about doing his job is illustrated by the fact that he has already fired one suspected leaker, Michael Short. That should send a message to others with loose lips. Vibriet Bart, Short, an ally of White House Chief of Staff Rience Priebus and now former Press Secretary Sean Spicer, who resigned last week, was terminated on Tuesday by new White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci. Politico's Tara Palmieri was the first to report the news. Newly appointed White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci said on Tuesday that he plans to dismiss Assistant Press Secretary Michael Short, Palmieri wrote on Tuesday morning. It would be Scaramucci's first step toward shaking up the communications shop which has been dominated by former Republican National Committee staffers loyal to White House Chief of Staff Rians Priebus, a former RNC chairman. It is unlikely that Short will be the only one to go. Recall that the RNC was filled with never-Trumpers. Hence it's quite possible that some of these would like to insinuate themselves into his administration only to curry favor with selected outside contacts by leaking information about an administration the head of which they cannot stand. As such, they all need to be identified and fired. Immediately. Short seems to have trouble getting the message, and he sounds like someone whose words should not be taken at face value. H. T. Payback John McCain furious after Rand Paul shuts down his most prized possession. John McCain shocked the American public when he sided with the Democrats and stopped the repealing of Obamacare. TDC reported that. Although the National Defense Authorization Act was a key item on the agenda for McCain, Paul stepped in to block the bill by requesting two amendments be added to the legislation namely one on prohibiting indefinite detention and one on the authorization of the use of military force to fight the Islamic State. McCain's frustration with Paul stems from his desire to pass them down as soon as possible, mostly because he leaves to Arizona on Monday to begin cancer treatment, according to sources who spoke with CNN. As CNN noted, the fact that McCain is leaving Monday helps to explain why GOP Senator Mitch McConnell would let the NDA vote occur in the midst of a heated debate on health care reform. McCain said in a statement, for 55 years in a row, Congress has passed the National Defense Authorization Act, which provides our men and women in uniform with the resources, capabilities, and pay and benefits that they need to perform their missions on behalf of the American people and keep our country safe. This legislation is more vital than ever. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Boom. Chris Wallace tries to embarrass Kellyanne Conway. Regrets immediately. Fox News host Chris Wallace tried to embarrass Kellyanne Conway by saying that the White House is in disarray. Never mind the countless accomplishments Trump has made in just six months on the job, that doesn't matter. All Chris Wallace can seem to focus on is the negative, and Kellyanne Conway just made him pay. This is yet another pathetic attempt to embarrass President Trump by insinuating he doesn't have control of his staff, and Kellyanne Conway was having none of IT. You can watch the video here. What do you think of this? Share your opinion.
Bill O'Reilly comes back with a stunning announcement. A few months passed since Bill O'Reilly was fired from Fox News after the sexual harassment accusations by various women. Now, he has resurfaced on Twitter to make a surprising announcement to his fans and introduce them to someone special in his life. O'Reilly reportedly just introduced fans to his new companion, a corgi monster with one limp ear and affection for the beach. This comes after Mediate reported that rumors are going around that O'Reilly and Sean Hannity are talking about teaming up on a new joint venture on another network. New York Magazine's Gabriel Sherman went on MSNBC on Sunday to say that his sources say that Sinclair Broadcasting wants to hire the media heavyweights as part of their effort to become the premier right-leaning news platform of the post-Roger Riles world. My sources in and around Fox say that he and Bill O'Reilly are potentially in talks to take their shows to Sinclair, Sherman said. Bill O'Reilly's wanted to get back into the game. So, Sinclair really wants to build the future of a conservative media empire, and poaching Fox's biggest names would help them do that. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Trump received the one thing he wants a new Russia sanctions bill from Congress. After the new sanctions towards Russia coming from Congress, Russian President Vladimir Putin decided to eject 755 U.S. diplomats from his country. The announcement seemed to be timed right before President Trump signed a new bill. The MSM is telling everyone that the bill is a way to force President Trump to enforce sanctions against Russia. Not so fast. In fact, the bill reinforces existing executive orders giving President Trump more authority to enact sanctions than he previously had. Contrary to what is being reported, the bill also deals with Iran and North Korea. The bill was sent from the Congress to the President late Friday. It could be sitting on President Trump's desk waiting to be signed as early as Monday morning. The global media missed one important point in the bill which reads, any person that the President determines knowingly engages in significant activities undermining cybersecurity against any person, including a democratic institution, or government on behalf of the government of the Russian Federation, this will provide President Trump with sweeping powers over global media and businesses. For example, let's say the Russian office of CNN reports on an element of U.S. security and President Trump determines that their news report undermines cybersecurity against the United States. In that case, he will now have the authority to freeze assets and cash of that foreign entity. That is CNN Russia, RT, etc. In other words, global media has to be a lot more honest about what they report. The First Amendment protects them in the United States, but it doesn't protect their foreign offices and foreign businesses from international sanctions. Moreover, Congress just called on Jeff Sessions to appoint another special counsel to investigate Clinton. Obama, Rice, Comey, and Lynch. We contacted Dan Sessions a well-known and prolific online Trump supporter. After we explained the new bill he said, very interesting, what happens if and when that special counsel determines that Russia was working with the Democrats? What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Republican senators prove to America they are nothing but filthy liars. For seven years every Republican lawmaker running for office ran on repealing Obamacare. Just four months ago Republicans ran an ad on how they are keeping their promise on repealing Obamacare. This was after the election. The ad was titled, In Charge. Senator McCain ran on repealing Obamacare in 2016. McCain lectured Democrats to wake up to the failure of Obamacare last September. But last week John McCain flew back to Washington, D.C. this week to lecture Americans and kill the repeal of Obamacare. John McCain is a liar. Republican Senators Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski are liars. They all ran on repealing Obamacare. This should have happened President Trump's first week in office. But last week Republicans proved they are filthy liars. It's hard to believe anything these politicians say going forward. President Trump was right. It's time to drain the swamp. Tammy Bruce responded appropriately to the Republican Party failures and lies on Friday. 
The question that American voters and Trump voters are now having to ask, who is the problem here? The Democrats have always been honest about being losers and not being in touch with the American people. But the Republicans have lied to people, according to Eric Kander, lied to get elected. That's what the American people are going to have to address. Spot on at Hey Tammy Bruce. Republicans lied to get elected.